Hello again. This is the second part in a series of two videos on thin walled pressure vessels. In the first part, I showed you where the expressions for thin, the stress of thin walled pressure vessels comes from. In this part, I'm going to do some sample calculations. Um, in the time since I made the other one, other video, I came up with some more examples of pressure vessels. Here's the ubiquitous Coke can. I drink probably too much Diet Coke, but there's a Coke can. It's pressurized when uh, uh, I buy it, and then when I open it, of course, it's relieved the pressure. Here's another one that's a little less common. I have this really cool toy steam engine. You might have seen these before. Modelers use these, and sometimes they even use them to run uh, little toy trains and generators and things. There's a little flywheel there. This silver thing right there is a pressure vessel, and you actually make a little fire down here and heat water to pressurize it that runs the steam engine. So there's a thin wall pressure vessel as well. Okay, now let's take two examples. Let's start with a propane tank. Now you might have seen these around, maybe you didn't know what they were, but there's these big propane tanks, they're like giant round-ended cylinders, almost like a large pill or something. And a lot of times they'll have a little cap on them. When I was younger, I always thought these looked like submarines. They're just a valve under there. That's not part of the pressure vessel. This is the pressure vessel. It's round and has hemispherical heads. So we're given this thing. And let's just say the outside diameter is 1.5 meters. Okay. The wall thickness is 0 to 0 meters, 20 millimeters. And let's say also that the pressure is 25 atmospheres, ATM. So if you're working in English units, it's one atmosphere is 14.7 PSI nominally. And if you're working in metric units, one atmosphere is 101.3 kilopascals. So let's do that. Let's, let's assume all that stuff. And uh, let's find the, pre the stress. Let's find maximum normal stress. And let's find out whether we can, uh, this, this uh, stress is a number we can live with, whether it's far enough below the yield stress of our material that we don't expect failure. Um, yield stress of material, let's assume, is 300 megapascals. Now that's yield stress. That assumes no safety factor at all. This is a low grade of steel, like a cold rolled steel. All right. So if we get close to that, that's bad. We want to be significantly lower than this number because if we're not, that means we're, we're, we're perhaps too close to yield and an imperfection in the steel, an imperfection in the weld, and God knows that happens, or corrosion or a dent or any kind of imperfection, any kind of flaw in the structure or any accidental overcharging the tank could cause it to rupture. We don't want that. Blowing up propane tanks, that's bad. On a good, bad scale, that's bad. Okay, so let's do this. So we're going to find maximum stress. Now, we already know that the longitudinal stress is half the hoop stress, so there's no point in calculating longitudinal stress. We're only interested in the hoop stress. And the hoop stress is pressure times the mean diameter over 2 times the thickness. It's a very simple expression. All right, now let's make sure how far I can go. Right about there is as low as I can go. Uh, in fact, let me move this. Give myself some more working room here. All right, um, so I need to know the mean diameter. Well, that's easy. Mean diameter is just the diameter minus the wall thickness. The inner diameter, remember, is the outer diameter minus two, two wall thicknesses. Here we're interested in mean. So it's 1.5 meters minus 0 0.020 meters. A uh, very small number, a uh, very small change there. You could almost use just the outer diameter, still get about the right answer. Um, and uh, also, if you're working in, uh, let's let's put some numbers down here. Uh, that's a hundred. That's that's a, approximately 2.5 megapascals. And if you're working in English units, that turns out to be 367.3 psi. So this is, in spite of being 25 atmospheres, that's not a huge number. All right. So if we work through this, it's pressure. So it's um, 25 times 101.3 times 10 to the 3 pascals times 1.5 minus 0 0.020 meters all over, let's see, 2 times 0 0.020 meters. 
this comes out to be, make sure I write this out right, 93.7 more or less 70 megapascals. Well, that gives us a safety factor of about 3 based on that yield strength. Good, but if I was going to design something like this, I might want the stress to be lower than that. Um, certainly this is going to sit out in the weather, it could corrode, it could get run into, you know, might back a car into it by accident if it was in the yard. There's lots of reasons why this might not lead a comfortable life. It may degrade over time. Safety factor 3 may not be enough. And we could change that by either changing the, uh, lowering the pressure, we could raise the wall thickness a little bit, we could even change the mean diameter if we wanted to. But that's at least in the ballpark of the right answer or of an acceptable answer. Now, let's try a different one. Let's try uh, a slightly different calculation where we're working with a uh, something that looks kind of like a scuba tank. All right? And scuba tanks have very high pressures because in English units anyway, 3600 PSI is not uncommon because we're trying to uh, put as much air in there as possible. To make things simple, I'm going to say the mean diameter is 200 millimeters. The wall thickness is six millimeters. That's about right, about a quarter inch if you're working in English units. And um, let's find out what maximum pressure we can have if uh, we know the acceptable yield stress of the material. Okay. We'll assume that we're working with number one, a fairly high quality material, not just sort of garden variety steel, but a steel or a, some material aluminum, steel, plastic, something, with a relatively high yield stress, we'll assume we've got a safety factor built in, and we're going to assume also that the quality of the manufacturing is high, so we can live with a slightly lower safety factor than we might otherwise. Okay, so we're given that, so let's find the maximum pressure we can, we can expect to live with. So again, we don't need to worry about the longitudinal stress because we know that's half the hoop stress. Let's look at the hoop stress. Well, we know this is true. Um, PDM over 2T. Well, that's what we want to solve for. Because we know all these other numbers. This is given. This is 100 megapascals. That's 200 millimeters. That's just a number. And that's 6 millimeters. So let's push a few symbols around here. 2 T sigma H, which is really the sigma yield, because that's the, the maximum uh, stress I can, normal stress I can live with, um, over dm equals p. Did I get that right? I did. Okay, so that's 2 times 0 0.006 meters times 100 times 10 to the 6th newton per meter squared all over, let me change that, that looks better. Um, and that's all over 0 0.20 meters, and that's going to equal my pressure that I, that I can uh, live with here. And you can see this is going to work out really conveniently. When you make up the problems, you get to make it so the numbers work out. And uh, let's see, I come up with 6 times 10 to the 6th pascals, or 6 megapascals. I'm not sure what that means. That isn't a very helpful unit. That turns out to be about 59 atmospheres in round numbers. 59 atmospheres. Now remember, all the uh, calculations we've done here have assumed we've got a thin wall pressure vessel. A good rule of thumb is we want the mean diameter to be 20 times the wall thickness. Well, if you divide 200 millimeters by 6 millimeters, you get a number that's a lot more than 20. I think it's 33, point, uh, 33 and a third would check me on that. So this definitely counts as a thin wall pressure vessel. So there you go. If you're a scuba diver, with this kind of tank, you could put 59 atmospheres of pressure in it, maybe a little more, and still have a nice safety factor, assuming this thing is made out of uh, something fairly high quality and it's made in such a way that it doesn't have a lot of flaws in it.